So let me introduce the last speaker. And in the world of awkwardness, I'm going to introduce myself. Rick Ginsburg is the Dean of the School of Education and Human Sciences at the University of Kansas. You will know him, he is devilishly handsome. I do wanna say that uh, I've been involved with a group of uh, about 40 deans from around the world called the Global Education Deans Forum. It's from leading research universities all over the world. We get together and talk about common issues. The world is indeed flat. Uh, we, we did a, an initial paper years ago about what are the biggest issues facing us in education schools in their country and at their university. All of us came up with the same things. It was how in large name we're gonna deal with technology and AI. Uh, how are we gonna deal with uh, teacher shortages? How do we move from research to practice? And how do we deal with the needs of diverse learners? What we might call equity of diversity here, what some countries call immigration, other countries call migration, but the world is indeed flat. And that's been great for me. Uh, and we are setting up this uh, Center for Reimagining Education. We wanna get uh, lots of teachers involved with us and moving forward with the stuff that Jamie just talked about and, and, and everybody's been talking about today. Um, my talk is about us thinking about um, um, reconsidering literacy. Um, this isn't about minimizing the importance of reading. That's not what the, the talk is about. Indeed, I, I wanna thank Laurie Curtis, who we heard from earlier for her work and her colleagues' work, uh, because obviously reading is really important. And uh, as Laurie framed it kind of at the core of what we do. Um, and it's, it is true though, that high percentages of our kids do learn how to read at a fairly proficient level. Don't listen to what the politicians tell you about Kansas, they're wrong. Uh, Laurie said it's about what I think she said, uh, seven to 20%, I'd say about 10 to 30% of the kids do need more help when we, we know that. Although all students certainly uh, could be assisted in their reading development. And thankfully in Kansas, we've got great teachers and really good people uh, like the people at KSDE and other places that have good intentions and they're working on it. But I want us to consider something else today. Manjula, I'm gonna steal from you here. Now, if you would close your eyes, I'm gonna tell you a little story to challenge your thinking about reading and books and literacy a little bit. Pretend here you are in England in about 1750. Okay, you all there? Literacy is beginning to spread. People are really learning how to read, mostly women who have been barred from learning how to read forever. And something new is coming out called circulation libraries. So people are being able to share books and read and a new invention comes out. It's called the novel. Many found it awful. They were mostly romantic novels. People described it as the end of civil culture, the downfall of society as we know it. The learned and the aristocracy, the moneyed classes, they were outraged. They looked at it with scorn and distrust. Think that's not true? I read you here the best analysis ever written about the feelings about the English novel when it came out about 1750. They were corruptive, specifically having dangerous psychological effects, triggering imitation and inoculating wrong ideas of love and life, mostly for women, in a harmful waste of time, damaging not only people's minds, but the morale of readers, but also their eyesight and their posture. Wow, here we are 300 years later and novels dominate the publishing industry, dominate the publishing industry. You can go to universities and take classes on novels. You can write a dissertation on novels. It didn't ruin our society. In more recent times, literacy has, has had a complicated history. You know, they like to critique faculty for, uh, at universities for being liberal, but I say au contraire. 
We've been fighting the reading wars for 50, 60 years. The third longest war in the history of mankind is the reading wars that are still in place today with no end in sight. New, new approaches are emerging. Uh, Laurie talked about the science of reading is, is, is beginning to dominate. Uh, some approaches are certainly better than others, but the re reality remains uh, that students do well with some approaches and other students probably do better with other approaches as well. Sadly, our notions about literacy in this country and abroad are based on the results of standardized tests that ladies and gentlemen predict nothing. It was a Nobel laureate in economics that most recently talked about that. Let's be honest, we're obsessed with test scores related to reading and other subjects, though they're often not well understood. I'm gonna uh, go off task here just a minute. We do things like kindergarten readiness, well intended. You know what kindergarten readiness is about? Getting kids ready for the third grade test. That's what kindergarten readiness is about. And you know what? Unless we change to have things happening in vitro, uh, the white wealthy kids will do better than the kids from poverty and, and from different kinds of backgrounds. Bigger challenges with, uh, with literacy is about uh, assessing comprehension. Standardized tests try, they don't provide context, they don't do it well. Um, here's a big question for us though. What's do, what does proficiency in literacy mean in our emerging new world? of AI and ChatGPT and virtual reality and social media and all that's yet to come. Today, there is growing reliance on audio and video and experiential instructional approaches that don't require, frankly, any reading. Think I'm wrong? I go to bake a cake, I don't read a book. What do you do? Go to YouTube. Want to fix your toilet? You read a book? Nah, you go to YouTube. Within a few years, every book ever written will be audio every book ever written. Teachers told me, I was talking to some teachers, I asked them, what do they do when they, uh, they need a lesson plan and they don't have a lot of time? They said, we go to TikTok U. I said, what the hell is TikTok U? I'm not another competitor now. Well, what they do is that, you know this, you go to online videos, right? And TikTok, you get 20, 25 of them. Though they're likely not evidence-based. Uh, you can find new approaches watching the videos and figure out, with the students what works. No reading involved. Ever try to build a Lego? I have. I got the instructions. There's no words, there's pictures. I said to my son, you do it, man. I can't do that. There's nothing I can do there. You ever buy anything from Ikea? Ikea is, an instru is, a, is a reading free zone. And then my son plays video games. He plays his war games. My wife and I decided we got to get in there. Rick, you go play the war games. With us. I'm sitting there with this thing here, right? I said, just give me the damn instructions. He goes, instructions? Well, you know, video games are very doing. It's experiential learning, right? You go through, there's no instructions, zero. All of these are reading free zones. And you know better to me, than me that students come to you today with all sorts of approaches to learning, podcasts, other audio approaches, now virtual reality, they don't read. The point is that reading isn't a part, a huge part of the equation in some cases, but the emphasis on what we focus on today is solely on test scores. It's misguided. Need another example? Um, I was, uh, you all have one of these. You ever do this stuff? Talk to your friends? It's called texting. 65% of the world's population text, 65%. And it has its own language. It uses standardized abbreviations, pictures, and emojis. I was with some kids in a school district, the struggling readers that Laurie talked about and I referred to earlier. And I asked them, what, I watched them, you know, and I asked them, can I look what you're doing? And I saw they were communicating with each other using a language I didn't know. I want to tell you that I, with 100% certainty, that I am completely illiterate in the texting world. And I have a PhD from the University of Chicago. So there you go. In today's world, what we need is multiple literacies. Laurie, I think you, you refer to that as well. We have a long history, frankly, in the literacy world of discussing, discussing multiple li literacies. What might they be? Obviously, uh, the base has to be a level of reading proficiency, especially with a big focus on comprehension. 
I, I think deciphering truth from friction, what Jamie called information literacy, is really important in the future. Maybe we got to all learn standardized abbreviations so we can uh, keep up with our kids uh, on texting and things like that. There may be others, media literacy, di digital literacy, oral literacy. Point is, is that we got to think about literacy in different ways. It get, means getting rid of our, uh, of our obsession with test scores that really show little and don't capture certainly the world of comprehension. Um, I say this understanding that change is really hard. Schools and classrooms, as we mentioned at the very beginning, are pretty similar today and where they were a long time ago. How do we change what David Taya called the grammar of schooling? The grammar of schooling, the way we operate is embedded in all of our hearts and souls. How do we move from making small changes, what some experts call first order changes, like a new book or a different test, an altered curriculum, or going from blackboards to whiteboards, those are small changes, to something that's truly transformational, what Young started us out with this morning and thinking about it. So I ask you all to consider this. What should literacy encompass today with the growth of what Young called smart machines, with AI and chat GPT and virtual reality? What are the literacies that will best serve the kids of today and our students of tomorrow? How should teachers teach in a world where machines are smart and maybe in some ways smarter than us, as Jamie just talked about. They can do a lot for us. But we have to conceptualize what needs to be learned. We have to think about how best to support student emotional and relational needs, their creative nature, and their learning. In other words, we have to reconsider literacy and reimagine teaching and learning. Please think about joining us in the center we put together at KU. And I urge you to go sit and talk for a few minutes and answer questions and then we'll send you off to lunch. Thank you. Thank you for paying attention.